Well, as we heard earlier, the $146 billion rescue plan for Greece does not seem to be calming investors in today's session, certainly not when you look at the CDS market. And the euro is at a fresh one-year low today on fears that the European economies elsewhere in the zone are connected to the crisis and the situation may get worse, particularly for Spain and for Portugal. Also concern Ireland, which actually has a higher debt-to-GDP ratio than any of them. Joining us now to discuss the outlook for Ireland is Irish Foreign Minister Mihan Martin. Thank you so much for coming in studio today. I know, I know you're in New York for meetings at the UN, but obviously uh, the questions about the fragility of the Eurozone seemingly trumping all else right now. What's the reality of the relationships between countries in the Eurozone and those on the periphery like Ireland? Well, I think, first of all, by the way, the Irish situation is, 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 is quite strong because of the fact that we came into this crisis uh, with a lower debt to GDP ratio than most. And the, at the end of nine, for example, we were at 64 percent. You took a of lot GDP. of austerity measures Correct. very early on in this, and the market rewarded you for it that. It did, and the cost of borrowing came down uh, as a result of week. the cutting of salaries. We've cut public sector mm -hmm. salaries, we've cut social security payments, we've restructured pension frameworks for the future. So we have a sustainable pathway uh, to uh, getting the deficit right. Uh, and I think, fortunately, as I said, we went into the crisis with a lower debt to GDP ratio than most of our European colleagues because of the fact that in the good years, we did create a pension fund and we did reduce mm -hmm. the debt. Now, that said, I think um, I'm just fresh from Germany where I met with the German foreign minister last week and I just would like to articulate there's very strong resolve within Europe uh, to protect the euro and, and to support the euro. Uh, and I think that is demonstrated actually by the uh, unprecedented agreement by the uh, 27 member states. The, uh, the, Euro group, the uh, criticism states. of that though is, is that there wasn't a, a political mechanism in place to protect the euro. Well, I think, you know, one has to understand the political dynamic within Europe. Europe. It is you know, within the eurozone. Okay, you have uh, clear guidelines and parameters, but each member state still has its political systems to negotiate through, and it has done that. And in particular, I think uh, the Germans have been very clear about their, their their determination to support the euro, but they have steps in their own domestic parliament and in terms of their own uh, mm -hmm. constitutional framework that they have to negotiate through, which they they have clearly paved the way for. So I, I've, I'm quite um, um, satisfied. Uh, about the, the sense of purpose and resolve across the European political elite uh, to ensure uh, continued protection and support for the euro uh, on a collegial basis. We were looking at pictures out of Athens earlier today with huge banners being unfurled, a lot of public discontent about the austerity measures that the Greek people are going to have to take themselves. How do you sell at home to the Irish people who are already dealing with their own domestic you know, problems, the banking sector, the idea that they're going to help to have to help Greece out here. Well, Ireland get the Euro story. I mean, the European Union has been particularly uh, advantageous to Ireland, particularly because of the fact that it opened up so many new markets to Irish right. goods and services. We're an exporting nation. Uh, and we've also benefited from our membership of the Euro currency um, quite significantly. And even during this particular crisis, it's going to cost, what, 1.3 billion over euros? Three years, of the yes. Irish but people? of course, it's a loan facility that we'll be getting return on, and that's important. But broadly speaking, the Irish people get the importance of protecting the Euro. So it won't be that difficult to sell mm -hmm. um, in Ireland. Uh, and uh, just as the measures we've taken, the austerity measures in Ireland, again, the fact that we've had a strong tradition of social partnership, where we have had the trade union movement and the employers involved in a framework, has been facilitative, has been helpful in terms of the austerity measures we have taken, that people understand the bigger picture and the need to get on a pathway to recovery um, so that we can, uh, you know, in years to come then, um, enhance incomes and productivity. Are you confident that you can go to the markets and and get the kind of funding for some of the pro programs you need to carry out at home because uh, certainly um, we did hear at, out of Ireland that you may have to uh, skip some of the upcoming debt auctions. Well that's an option we have because of the fact that we have very strong cash balances in hand and so we have the option of, of, of time, you know, deciding the timing but of course we have 60 percent of this year covered already mm -hmm. uh, and we're in a very good position. Uh, but and you, in if fact, you went had to the a, market we've, we've you had think very good um, um, going to the market over the last 12 months been very good responses to Ireland okay. uh, and we're in a, a healthy position from that perspective. Thank you so much for coming in and giving your perspective, Minister. You're very welcome indeed. Thank I you. appreciate it.